Hello my dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan and today we will take up the next part of the unit on biotechnology for class 12th. In the earlier episodes related to this unit, we have already seen centrifugation and ultracentrifugation which are some of the techniques used in biotechnology. We have also studied the various principles of biotechnology, tools of recombinant DNA technology and processes of recombinant DNA technology. In this chapter, we will take up biotechnology and its applications. For convenience, I have divided this chapter into three parts. In the first part, we will discuss about the applications of biotechnology in agriculture. In the second part, we will focus on biotechnological applications in medicine. In the third part, the discussion will be focused on transgenic animals and plants and ethical issues in biotechnology. Dear students, we know that biotechnology is the use of living systems and organisms to develop or make useful products. We can also say this in a way that any technological application that uses biological systems, living organisms or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or processes for specific use can be considered as biotechnology. Biotechnology deals with industrial scale production or biopharmaceuticals and biologicals using genetically modified microbes, fungi, plants and animals. The application of biotechnology include therapeutics, diagnostics, genetically modified crops for agriculture, processed food, bioremediation, waste treatment and energy production. Let us now learn how human beings have used biotechnology to improve the quality of human life especially in the field of food production in which agriculture plays an important role. Biotechnology plays an important role in agricultural improvements. Let us take a look at the three options that can be thought for increasing food production. The first one in this order is agrochemical based agriculture. The second is organic agriculture and genetically engineered crop based agriculture is the third point. In the past century, the green revolution succeeded in tripling the food supply, but still it is not enough to feed the growing human population. These increased yields have partly been due to the use of improved crop varieties, but mainly due to the use of better management practices and use of agrochemicals like fertilizers and pesticides. However, for farmers in the developing world, agrochemicals are often too expensive. And further, increase in yield with existing varieties are not possible using conventional breeding. Now, we should think that what is the alternative path through which our farmers may obtain maximum yield from their fields? And is there a way to minimize the use of fertilizers and chemicals so that their harmful effects on the environment can be reduced? The possible answer to these questions is the use of genetically modified crops. Plants, bacteria, fungi and animals whose genes have been altered by manipulation are called genetically modified organisms or GMOs. In other words, a crop that contains and expresses a transgene is called a transgenic crop or genetically modified crop. GM plants have been useful in too many ways. Genetic modification has made crops more tolerant to abiotic stresses which include cold, drought, salinity, heat, etc. Genetic modification reduced reliance on chemical pesticides through the development of pest resistant crops. It helped to reduce post harvest losses. Genetic modification increased efficiency of mineral usage by plants. This prevents early exhaustion of fertility of soil. It enhanced nutritional value of food. Development of vitamin A enriched rice is one of the examples. In addition to these uses, genetic modification has been used to create tailor-made plants to supply alternative resources to industries in the form of starches, fuels and pharmaceuticals. One of the major role of biotechnology is to facilitate sustainable agriculture, which involves the use of renewable resources. This will cause minimum pollution and maintain the optimum yield level. Only the sustainable agricultural practices can be continued indefinitely. Biotechnology contributes to sustainable agriculture 
by developing biofertilizers, biopesticides, and disease and insect resistant varieties. Students, let us see what are biofertilizers. As we know that fertilizers are substances which bring about soil nutrient enrichment, they can be chemical fertilizers, green manures, and biofertilizers. The microorganisms which bring about nutrient enrichment of the soil are called biofertilizers. They are employed to enhance the availability of nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus to the crops. Biofertilizers include nitrogen fixing organisms such as bacteria, cyanobacteria and fungi. Some of the applications of biotechnology in agriculture include the production of pest resistant plants which could decrease the amount of pesticides used for their production. Now, let us study about Bt toxin. It is produced by a bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis. Bt toxin gene has been cloned from the bacteria. Bt toxin gene has been expressed in plants to provide resistance to insects without the need for insecticides. In effect, it created a biopesticide. Some of the examples of pest resistant plants are Bt cotton, Bt corn, Bt rice, Bt tomato, Bt potato, Bt soya bean etc. Let us see some features of Bt cotton. Some strains of Bacillus thuringiensis produce proteins that kill certain insects such as Lepidopterans, Coleopterans and Dipterans. Bacillus thuringiensis forms protein crystals during a particular phase of their growth. These crystals contain a toxic insecticidal protein. This protein do not kill the bacillus but kills the other insects because the Bt toxin protein exists as inactive protoxins. But once an insect ingests the inactive toxin, it is converted into an active form of toxin. This is due to the alkaline pH of the gut which solubilize the crystals. The activated toxin binds to the surface of midgut epithelial cells and create pores that cause cell swelling and lysis and eventually cause death of the insect. Specific Bt toxin genes were isolated from Bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated into the several crop plants such as cotton. We can observe a cotton ball destroyed by ball worms in this diagram. The choice of genes depends upon the crop and the targeted pest as most Bt toxins are insect group specific. The toxin is coded by a gene named CRI. Dear students, let me tell you that Bacillus thuringiensis was the first biopesticide to be used on a commercial scale in the world. Now, let us see the disease resistant and insect resistant varieties of plants created by genetic engineering. Plant diseases are caused by viruses, bacteria, fungi and nematodes. Let us see how virus resistant plants are produced. Virus has a simple structural organization. It consists of a genetic material and a protein coat. In most of the plant viruses, the genetic material is RNA and in others it is DNA. The genetic material is enclosed in a protein coat. For developing the virus resistance capacity in plants, the gene coding for the coat protein is isolated from the genome of the virus. This isolated gene is then introduced into the host of the virus and in this way it gets expressed in the host. The coat protein develops resistance in the host against the concerned virus. This technique has been used to produce a virus resistant variety of summer squash. Similarly, many virus resistant, bacteria resistant and fungus resistant varieties of crops have been developed. So students, let us conclude the topics we have studied today. We have seen that biotechnology contributes to sustainable agriculture by developing biofertilizers, biopesticides and disease and insect resistant varieties. We have also discussed about Bt toxin, Bt cotton and developing virus resistant varieties in detail. In the next episode of this chapter, we will discuss the applications of biotechnology in medicine. Till then, 
Goodbye and take care.